Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today's my lecture is about secondary active transport. The movement of substance across the cell membrane against chemical or electrical gradient with the energy which is derived secondarily from concentration gradient produced by primary active transport by the help of carrier protein is called secondary active transport. Normally, in secondary active transport, a substance is transported with sodium ion by means of a common carrier protein. When sodium is transported by a carrier protein, another substance is also transported by the same protein simultaneously, either in the same direction or in opposite direction. Thus, the transport of sodium is coupled with transport of another substance. So, secondary active transport is divided into two types, co-transport and counter-transport. At first, co-transport. Sodium co-transport is the process in which along with sodium, another substance is transported by a carrier protein is called co-transport which is also called symport. Energy from movement of sodium is obtained by breakdown of ATP. And the energy released by the movement of sodium is utilized for the movement of another substance. Carrier protein for sodium co-transport has two receptor sites on the outer surface. Among the two sites, one is for binding of sodium ion and another is for binding of another substance. When sodium ion is transported out of the cell by primary active transport, a large concentration gradient of sodium ion across the cell membrane usually develops, with high concentration outside the cell and low concentration inside. This gradient represents a storehouse of energy because the excess sodium outside the cell membrane is always attempting to diffuse to the interior. Under appropriate condition, this diffusion energy of sodium can pull other substance along with sodium through the cell membrane. This phenomenon is called co-transport. For sodium to pull another substance along with it, a coupling mechanism is required, which is achieved by means of still another carrier protein in the cell membrane. The carrier in this instance serves as an important point for both sodium ion and the substance to be co-transported. Once both are attached, energy gradient to the sodium ion causes both sodium ion and other substance to be transported together to the interior of the cell. Glucose and many amino acids are transported into most cells against their large concentration gradient. The mechanism for this action is entirely by co-transport. Let us discuss about the co-transport of glucose with sodium ion. And for this, their transport protein has two binding sites on its exterior side, one for sodium, one for glucose. A special property of the transport protein is that a conformational change to allow sodium movement to the interior will not occur until the glucose molecule also attach. Okay? This is the figure which uh, in this sodium and glucose are co-transported occur. Also, the concentration of sodium ion is high on the outside and low inside, which provide energy for this transport. When they both become attached, the conformational changes takes place and sodium and glucose are transported to the inside of the cell at the same time. Sodium co-transport of glucose occurs during absorption of the glucose from intestine and reabsorption of the glucose from renal tubule. This, in this figure, sodium co-transport occurs. Let's discuss about co-transport of amino acid along with sodium ion. Sodium co-transport of amino acid occurs in the same manner of for glucose, except that it has a different set of transport protein. At least five amino acid transport protein have been identified, each of which is responsible for transporting one subset of amino acid with specific molecular characteristics. 
Sodium co-transport of amino acid also occur during the absorption of amino acid from intestine and reabsorption from renal tubule. Other important co-transport mechanism in at least some cells include co-transport of chloride, iodide, iron and urate ions. This is the figure for co-transport. Then secondly counter-transport. In counter-transport, sodium ion again attempt to diffuse to the interior of the cell because their large concentration gradient. However, this time the substance to be transported is on the inside of the cell, must be transported to the outside. Therefore, the sodium ion binds to the carrier protein where it is project to the exterior surface of the membrane, while the substance to be counter transported bind to the interior projection of the carrier protein. Once both have been bounded, a conformational changes occur and energy liberated by the action of sodium ion moving to the interior causes other substance to move the exterior. Various counter transport systems are at first sodium calcium counter transport, sodium hydrogen counter transport and in other mechanism are sodium magnesium counter transport, sodium potassium counter transport, calcium magnesium counter transport, calcium potassium counter transport, chloride bicarbonate counter transport, chloride sulfate counter transport. In this, two especially important counter transport are sodium calcium counter transport and sodium hydrogen counter transport. Let's discuss at first about sodium counter transport of calcium ion. In sodium calcium counter transport, sodium and calcium ion moves in opposite direction with the help of a carrier protein which occur through all or almost all cell membrane. Here, sodium ion moving to the interior and calcium ion to the exterior. Both are bound to the same transport protein in a counter transport mode. This mechanism is in addition to the primary active transport of calcium that occur in some cell. This is the figure of sodium counter transport. In sodium hydrogen counter transport, the hydrogen ion are exchanged for sodium ion which occur in several tissues. An especially important example is proximal convoluted tubule of kidney, where sodium ion moves from lumen of the tubule to the interior of tubular cell, while hydrogen ion are counter transported from tubular cell to the tubular lumen. As a mechanism for concentrating hydrogen ion, counter transport is not nearly as powerful as primary active transport of hydrogen ion that occur in more distal tubule, but it can transport an extremely large number of hydrogen ion, thus making it a key to hydrogen ion control in body fluid. In this figure, where we want to uh, see you the co-transport and counter-transport at a glance. Thank you for your patience hearing.